Hello class, George here, and this video is hopefully going to be short and easy, but what we're going to discuss is an incredibly important topic, especially when it comes to making your applications as broad reaching as possible by offering multiple language supports um, with a, a very simple and convenient way that Android provides. I'm looking at the language settings under my, uh, my phone, and in this case I have my language set to English. If you're writing an application, it's incredibly possible that other languages have been selected by other users. Now, while you could query inside of your Java code what language is there and do a bunch of work trying to figure out how to handle every single language, Android has already gone to great lengths to make your life a lot easier. And we're going to start by creating a new project, call it whatever you want to. In my case, I'm just gonna call it localization strings. Hit next. I'm gonna be using versions API 17. Feel free to use an earlier version if you want to. We're really, really not gonna be doing anything that has to do with the uh, minimum SDK value. And I'm gonna just choose a empty activity and we're gonna leave it a main activity and an activity underscore main as well. Hit finish. All right, so here we are with our new project that under our res folder over here, we have had, of course, that value section. And uh, up till now, we've been placing strings in there, different resource strings, and we uh, reference those string values in our code. Now, that default strings folder is incredibly important inside of Android because if the user maybe has some sort of uh, language or location that you don't specify, that's the catch-all for everything. So it's your default catch-all. So if the user over here decides to set up a preference for, I don't know, um, Arabic maybe, and you don't have an Arabic language set up, it's just gonna to go to your default language, in which case is gonna be English for me because that's what I'll be typing everything to be. But for someone else, it could be a different language, of course. However, if you did supply an Arabic uh, uh, language translation for it, Android will automatically select that and then apply the appropriate uh, information on the screen. However, if maybe something was missing, maybe the uh, person didn't program their entire application to have Arabic, it would still fall through to your default language, which would be English in this case. So it would show English on the screen, but your app wouldn't crash. Now, for some reason, you decided to not include, or maybe you had uh, in the Arabic version some special kind of string value or something, but you don't have it in the default version over here, and uh, the user decides to change their language, and uh, you're still querying this value that's missing now, you're going to crash your app. You always, always need to make sure your default string folder, your default resources in general, uh, mirror whatever resources you have above it. That is, whatever resources in other languages you have. You can have as many languages as you want to, covering all different kinds of resources but you need to have your default. Another important thing is, if you happen to be a, um, a speaker of Mandarin or English, and that's the only thing you think about, so you decide, hey, I'm gonna make a strings folder that is targeting only English users or only Mandarin or something else for that matter, you don't have a default folder you're working with. You're targeting a specific language and your app will crash if uh, a different language is decided to be used. So always work in your preferred language in the default area of these things. And that way your app will never crash. It just might not show something the user can understand. Let's go back over to Android Studio and talk a little bit about what, I'm, what I mean by different languages here. So under our res folder, under the Android way of uh, looking at our project, we have of course drawables, layouts, mitmaps, values, and colors, dimensions, and strings in particular at the moment. Now we can have different drawables, layouts, and so forth for any language. You know, if if for some reason, um, in, in a particular language, maybe it reads from left to right and, or right to left and, and it messes with your format. Maybe you want to create a different layout. You can target different layouts for different languages, just as we're going to show that you can target different string resources for different languages. But right now we're in our default um, res resource folder. And uh, another way of looking at this is if we go to Android project and then under project, let's go to app and source, main, and then res for resources. And here you see all of the different resources that we had in that other view. And in, in particular, we have values, just a general values folder. So what I wanna do now is create a new folder. Let's create some string resources actually so we have something to look at. So let's just create some generic ones really quick. So let's do uh, string name is equal to, and let's just call this um, title underscore, let's just call it title. And let's say we're making a new game and it's called uh, uh, Animal March or Animal Parade. Let's do Animal Parade. That, that, that's a great game that we're targeting for little kids. And we'll do another one, maybe string name is equal to 
And maybe now we've got a bunch of animals in our game. So let's say this uh, animal underscore name underscore cheetah. Let's do cheetah. And then we'll just say cheetah. Okay, we've got three strings now. Let's come up with a way of, of representing a different language with these same strings. And to do that, it, it's really easy. There's a couple different ways we can do it. So I wanna go to my layout view, and I'm gonna click on the little earth, and I'm gonna hit edit translations. This is gonna bring up a screen called the translation editor that shows you all the different string key values that you've created so far. And then also shows you the default value, which is very important. So what we can do next is add new strings if we want to from this menu. It'll ask you for a key and the default value. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's do another animal, animal underscore name underscore dog. And the default value for me is just gonna be dog, okay? There we are, we have a new string. If we come on over here and go to our Android view and we do go to the strings folder, you'll notice that Android has automatically added that XML tag for a string. Back in translation editor, if we want to add a new language or a locale, we'll click on the earth again. And here it gives you a drop down list of all of the language specific locales. Now what you notice is that first of all, it's alphabetically ordered. Secondly, is that there's these parentheses followed by uh, a short abbreviation of whatever that particular language is. So go ahead and search through here. I'm gonna pick, uh, since I'm in the United States, uh, Spanish is, is typically a popular alternative language. So let's go to Spanish. There we are, ES. Now, immediately upon doing that, I get some red stuff going on here. I get two different red fields, and those are indicating to me that I don't have a, a full support in translating different things. Now, if I click the untranslatable checkbox here, it's going to remove that. It's going to say, oh, that's not a translatable title. Uh, let's ignore that. However, if we uncheck these, these are going to go back to red, and it's going to hint at me that I need to provide a translation. Now, I actually don't know Spanish. I took Latin and Russian when I was in high school, so uh, I'm going to need some help. So let's do cheetah, and there we are. So we're just going to copy and paste this over here. And there we are. Uh, and if we want to, of course, we can rename our app to be whatever we want to. So let's try localization strings. Cuerdas de localización, something like that. Once again, I have not really had Spanish before. Okay, so we now have these different values and we can go ahead and start adding additional locations if we want to. So let's say, um, what can we do here? Arabic, let's add Arabic. And we'll notice that we have these blank fields and it's telling us, please fill those fields in. So let's go ahead and do a few of them. Let's try, let's see if Google Translate will do Arabic for me. It will, great. Let's do cheetah. Uh, let's go ahead and add one last one because I'm kind of curious. Let's uh, do, let's do Japanese. There we are, Japanese right there. Um, and let's give this a go. There we go. So now we have our default values, which are in English, and then of course our other three languages. Uh, you might think that you need to go in here and add an English variant, but you really don't have to. Um, because since English users will not be using these other versions, uh, it's going to default to this one anyway. So now let's go ahead and take a look at what's really going on here. And that's right over here under Android. You'll notice it kind of masks what's happening. Under values, we now have under strings.xml a five with five different string XMLs. Our default one here, as well as Arabic, English, uh, Spanish, and Japanese. What's really happening, if we go back to projects, is you can see we have several different folders, and each folder is a values folder. Each of these folders has a dash followed by the, uh, the acronym for that particular locale. In this case, Arabic, English, Spanish, and Japanese. Now I'm gonna delete English, I have no reason to keep that one. So let's right click and delete, delete please. There we are. And then we can see it once we refresh this page, the English one goes away. But underneath each of these is a strings.xml folder, same name with the different values inside of it targeting that particular language. And you can see them all right there. So the other way that we could add these folders in here if we don't wanna use that menu for some reason, let's go back to the Android view, click on values, right click, new value resource folder. So in this case, they're gonna ask you, what's the name of this thing? Well, I'm gonna choose string. And now I can choose a qualifier. Qualifiers allow you to target different devices, different locales based upon uh, whatever the user settings are. So you can go through this menu right now and see things like size, ratio, orientation. In our case, we care about the locale. This should start looking pretty familiar. But what's interesting is we actually can narrow things down even further beyond the language with Spanish. Now, you will notice that the uh, abbreviation is first as opposed to the language name. So something like Spanish 
which as an English speaker, I would say Spanish starts with an S. Uh, since it's Espanol, we need to go to ES down here for Spanish. And then now we can though target a specific region. So if, if in particular, we wanted to target a kind of Spanish, maybe in Ecuador, Bolivia, Chile, or Spain, um, we could do so. And we can choose a more refined version. And as you can see, if we hit OK, what happens here is we get, and what we'll notice here is that under values-es, we have two strings. Actually, I screwed up. I named it the wrong thing, and that's why it didn't go to the right folder. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and uh, delete that really quick. There we are. And coming back over here, let's add that new translation again. Right-click, new, values, locale. Let's do es for espanol. And we'll do, let's say Spain is what we're targeting in this case. And we're going to call this strings. Hit OK. So you notice I got an error there, and that's because I had selected any region accidentally. Um, the file already exists, but now by choosing a subregion and hitting OK, it will create that other file for me. And if we go under values, under strings, you'll notice that I have not only an ES uh, modifier on this, but I also have an ES-RES for Spain. Now if we come over into our actual application, right now nothing's really going on. We just have this hello world. So let's just really quick edit this, and then we'll put this on our phone. Let's make this a linear layout and coming back over to design that linear layout orientation orientation is going to be vertical. Let's take this text and uh, copy it a few times and paste it back in and do that again. And I believe we had how many strings? Three strings? Four strings? It's like we only had really three that we're going to be messing with. So let's delete this one. Let's have these ones now reference those values. So under text, click on the dot dot dot, bring that open and choose the proper string resource. In this case, let's call this one title. So there it is. And I love this. It actually shows you the different languages and their different values right there. Hit that one. Perfect. Go down to the next one. Let's do another title. And let's do, what was it? Uh, animal. We'll do cheetah followed by dog. Okay. And let's just, just for my personal reasons, let's uh, go to gravity and center everything right there. Nice. Okay, so let's go ahead and launch this on my uh, personal device. You want to, so let's see, what languages can I even support? Um, looks like I have English, Espanol, and um, pardon me, I'm, I'm not sure which languages these are. So I might not even be able to support one of the languages. Let's see what happens. So let's hit run. So if we go down to Android monitor right here, we can see my Samsung Galaxy is fine right there, cleared out a little bit. Let's hit the run button. Let's choose my Samsung device, hit OK. And here we are with our app. We have, uh, of course, things in English because, uh, that's, because that's the default language that we've set up in this case. So let's go back now to our language settings and let's choose Espanol. Now let's, uh, I'm going to accept it and let's go to, oh, I had it. There we are. And we can see now that our application has changed to support that language. Going back again to our language settings, click on this. Let's choose a different language. I don't know what languages these are, so let's just give it a go. Is that Korean or Chinese? Here we are. Let's go to our other languages and let's choose this one right here. And as we can see, I did not support that language. So in this case, it's going to my default type, which is English. All right, everyone. I hope you found that enjoyable, uh, pretty interesting. And it's a great reason why you should always take advantage of your resource folder and not just for strings, but for just about anything. Everything I showed you here not only works for strings, but it also works for any drawables, images you put in there, um, layouts, uh, and uh, just about anything else. All right, well, I'll see you next time. Have a good day. Bye.